Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, touring, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Carol Stratton on the line, and she's a novelist and children's writer, and she's also author of the upcoming book, The Littlest Bell Ringer. Carol, welcome to the show. Oh, I'm so excited to be here today, Adam. All right, Carol, so we have a good topic today. So how to get published through a traditional publisher. I know you've done that, and you're also in the middle of publishing your your first self-published book. So let's just say you've covered the gambit when it comes to writing and otherwise. So I want to get into this topic with you. But before we do, let's go a little bit further in your background. So how did you get re- started in your career really in writing? Well, actually, I started very young. In sixth grade, we had a um, newspaper that published a little essay. Um, that I had written, I, looking back, it was pr- pretty lame, but that was my big thrill to see my um, name in print. But really, my first big article was right after 9-11. I had been playing around with becoming a um, an author, and I was so upset about what happened uh, with the Twin Towers and everything, and I, I felt like I needed to express what I had to say. So I ended up getting my first um, real thing published in our our little local newspaper, the Zionsville Sentinel, and that was that was really exciting, and that got me thinking, yeah, I guess I can be published. So I I had that little boost to give me a little confidence. So from there, I started going to writers' conferences, and I uh, started working on uh, being a freelance writer, and I totally recommend starting out just writing articles, learn how to write nonfiction, learn how to get on deadlines and build up what what they call in the business your clips, which means things that you've been published. Because very often you go to a conference and you meet with a publisher and they'll say, well, what have you published, you know, besides of this book you want to have published? So you show them, oh, this magazine, this newspaper published me. So you, you want to build that up. That gives you confidence. It teaches you how to write um, clearly and um, concisely. And uh, so I did that for several years, then being a newspaper reporter for two and a half years. And that's a whole nother trip. You learn all about different people and uh, their stories. I love doing that in the local community. And finally, I... Uh, because I've moved so much, I, my first book was uh, Changing Zip Codes, which is a devotional, um, kind of a daily little thing to read with a little bit of a Bible verse in my, my story. A lot of them were funny because there are funny things that happen when you move. <laughs> Excuse me. But uh, I got that published first, and then I thought, aha, now I'll pitch my um my novel that I had, um, which is called Lake Surrender, and it was about a single mom who moves from California to northern Michigan with her two kids, one being autistic. She's lost her divorce, or she's had a divorce. She's lost her house and uh, her marriage, and she starts all over. And the only job she could have was a job at a um, camp as a cook, and she didn't know how to cook. So there's a lot of humor in that. Yeah. <laughs> She she learned the hard way. <laughs> so she's gone from being a big shot editor at a, a children's book company to being a very humble cook at a um, camp. So I use a lot of my background 
I I think I did line. I know I worked a lot in camps growing up. I love camps. I love the whole summer camp um, uh, scene. And I also have a degree in rec therapy, and I worked a lot with uh, disabled kids. So for a couple of years, I worked in the school district where we lived, and I worked in an AI classroom, which is an autistically impaired classroom with severely autistic children who are very, you know, far on the uh, on the scale. And I learned a lot. It was just really was, I think I had a passion for talking to people about what parents go through and how hard it is, but, you know, how intriguing these kids are in a certain sort of a way. But uh, one of the things I want to really stress is to not give up. One of the biggest things you have to overcome as a writer, you don't have someone next to you saying, ah, ah, girl, keep going. You have to say that to yourself. And you have to have what they call rhino skin, which means you're able to take a lot of rejections. My very first novel I wrote was a kid's novel, and I have 33 rejections from um, traditional publishers. And I, I look sometimes and I think, why didn't I get up? <laughs> that's mm. a lot of rejections. But No, uh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and that's uh no, and I think that's also a great transition. So let's go further into today's topic. So I think that's a great start for us. So how to get published to a traditional publisher. So you already set the stage, right? Rejected thirty three times. I mean where where does the story go there from there? <laughs> Well, I should have maybe thought, get another hobby, but I'm a very determined person. (laughs) (laughs) That's the first thing I'm going to take notes from you. Be determined. Be determined. Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is not everybody wants to write a a book or write an article. Um, That sounds like a lot of work to most people. So if you have that in you, I, I believe God put that in you as an ability or a talent, and you need to work on it and develop it and not give up. And just realize a lot of people have fa- failed. Uh, you know, of course, um, The Help. Are you, are you familiar with the novel The Help? They made yeah. a movie out of it. But she was rejected 60 times and was redoing her manuscript as she was uh, going into labor for her first child. So, I mean, there's some really determined people out there. So believe in yourself, believe in uh, what what your talents are, and just keep pushing forward. And find your right niche, you know. Maybe yeah. writing a novel so, isn't for you. Mm-hmm. Well, and so, Carol, let's go into a little bit of the technical side. So you of like, how you get over that hump. So we know you have to be determined. You know you have to find your niche. Like, you have to have a product, right? So let's mm-hmm. talk about, so now, so now, what's that next step? Like, somebody says, okay, so I have this pile of paper in front of me. Like, what do I do next? Like, talk about right. that submission pro- process and how that worked out. Yes. Uh, very often, the only place you can submit if you do not, if you're a newbie and do not have an um, agent, is to go to writer's conferences. Plus, you learn how to write there. You, you take mm. a lot of classes. So I highly recommend uh, doing that. Just so really working on the craft. So like the big yeah. ones, I think there's like, there's what, New York, L.A., like any ones that you suggest? What, what, how would you kind of? You know, that? I would start small. It's kind of scary mm. to go to some of these big ones. I'd start with a local one and just, you know, test, test it out. Maybe you'll make some friends there who are in the same boat. Well, I've I found that writers can be very supportive of each other. So get a support system. That no, would that's be, good. Uh, that's good. Mm-hmm. And then so conferences. I think conferences are a big deal. Like I, I yes, they are. That. Um, so conferences yeah. work. And so let's say you go to the conferences and now you make a couple of contacts. Like what's the next step? Well, if they want to see your manuscript, if it's nonfiction. You can usually send two or three chapters. If it's fiction, they want to know you have finished the story. They're not going to wait around. So uh, they, you will hopefully send that finished manuscript to them, and they will maybe take six months and look at it and then say yes or no. But before you do that, I would suggest having a um, paid editor, professional editor, go over it because they will find things that you never saw. Even mm-hmm. even the best writers have paid professional editors to 
to look it over. And editors, editors have other editors do it because you can't. You're too close to the work. Like you, <laughs> yeah, and there's a different exactly. copy editor. There's a different copy editor versus the, the regular editor that's going to look at context yeah. and like positioning and story flow. Like so, there's a process there. And I people that all the yeah. time. I'm like, you could do it yourself. You can just do it. But like, there's a process there. And even I don't care who you are, Malcolm Gladwell, whatever your writer is, whatever. Yeah. Like they have editors that have to edit their work because you know they have teams of editors and things that do it. The <laughs> higher up and the bigger you get. So like at the mm-hmm. least. You should be having, at the least, if you can't afford an editor, you need to have friends proofread it, like something. You need another set of eyes on it. It can't just be your eyes. Like, if you have a friend that's a lawyer that looks at legal documents all day, hey, you better take them to lunch. Hey, do you you want to read my (laughs) name? Like, do what you can do. Like, you have that one person you went to college with that is always the smarty fan. Like, get them to read it. Like, do something. Just, I just want your feedback on it. That's all. Like, because the thing is, is there's a lot of intelligent people that may not be in the field, but they may be your friends that, you know, something is better than nothing but you need another set of eyes that's what i always say absolutely i couldn't agree and and then the other thing is get a bit get beta readers just people who love mm-hmm. to read your subject and they will give you feedback on the story hey you forgot about this or that they don't have to you know edit it yeah. just tell is the story working I love it. Um, so, mm-hmm. Carol, I could talk to you about this all day long, but I want to. I do want. I do want to. Um, I want to do. I want to end it on another note, though. So, I want people to understand a little bit more about how they can get your newest work when it comes out, the littlest bell ringer. How can they find your previous works, and how do they connect with you overall? Yes, um, my first two books are on Amazon, and. Uh, the littlest bell ringer will also be on Amazon probably mid October. It's uh, a middle grade novel for uh, fourth through sixth graders, but I think parents will enjoy it too. And I have a Facebook uh, for my author page, Carol Grace Stratton, or you can connect with me on Twitter at Carol G. Stratton. And uh, I also have a website, carolgstratton.com, where I do blogging when I have time. (laughs) Fantastic. Well, Carol, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing oh, more about you. your background and, of course, all of your um, the, the new work, The Littlest Bell Ringer that's coming out, of course, and then uh, all your other work. So thank you for that and also telling us a little bit more about your journey and how you got went to get published. So I think this is a great um, – you're an inspiration for many people out there that are going to listen to this and also want to be published. So appreciate you sharing that story. And to our audience, as always, uh, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot Thank of value you. out of this. If you did, absolutely. Um, if, if you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave us a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters um, Business, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video and uh, let us know what kind of projects or if you got anything you're writing. I mean, let us know there. And uh, Carol, really appreciate it. Thanks again for coming on the show. I uh, appreciate you. Have a great day.